Almost time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. We're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our lives, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live, Monday, April 29th. A little wild move here in the last 30 minutes. Uh, sounds like some of you all toss is down. It must be a Schwab thing. Mine never mine never went down, so it, must, it looks like it's a Schwab deal, unfortunately. Sorry to hear that for you all. Um, S&P up 10, NASDAQ up 34, Russell up 14. Dow up 100, gold and silver fairly flat, notes and bonds a little bit up, 10-year yield down 1%, oil down, natty gas up, grains are mixed, euro in the pound a little bit higher, Bitcoin down almost 2%. VIX contracting 1.5% down to 14.8. Um, so that little flush, I had just got hit 85% on one of my three twos. And so it re-entered a new one. So that one got flushed out for a full stop. So that was unfortunate. Uh, my one to one is still alive. My one DTE is still alive up 36%. And then I and, and then it re-entered another three two that's up a few percent. So this is my remaining one to one. This is my current three, two. It's a neutral day. I won't be doing any new power hour. I did get filled on my quad 40 just a few minutes ago. Uh, my NDX trade is doing good. So I'm still up about five in one account and about 3,500 in my um, challenge portfolio. I also did get really lucky and right here where it started consolidating, and start drifting lower, I I was like, you know what? I, I kind of just want to protect some of the stuff I've got. So I put on a Rick literally right before it flushed. I was literally typing in the in the community to just let you guys know I did a discretionary Rick and then boom, it hit my profit target on two of my three contracts. Uh, so that was lucky and good, but um, net net that flush was not fun. And I think that's about all I got for you. Chad, what's going on with you? Oh, wait. Hang on, Chad. There we go, Chad. Yep. Uh, yeah, that flush was frustrating. Um, not so much in my TLC account. I mean, well, it was. Um, but more so in my other account because uh, if you remember last week, I'd been... You want to hit a 20% profit target. I don't close it or I don't um, take the profit target. I just adjust my next profit target, lower my stop. And so like I had a like a 50 point wide iron condor that was uh, at over I had like 90% profit. And I think my stop was like $1.90 or something. <laughs> and it ended up getting stopped at like, um, 335. And then I had a similar one that I'd already booked 60% profit that got, I don't know, it stopped was like at two something and it stopped at 535. And so yeah, it went from being up slippage on that one too. Yeah. So it went from being up 7K, a little probably, well, cl probably closer to 8K to being up 2200 in that account. So, you know, and then it bounced right back up. So it's just that. Uh, obviously nothing you could do about it, but man, super frustrating. You sit here all day. I mean, cause literally I should have been stopped out and probably been up about six K. Um, you know, 
Uh, in my TLC account, I booked 20, 40, 60, 80 and out on my first one. Um, then booked uh, 20, 40 um, and on my on my uh, number two. And I'm currently setting dead set, little little right of center on that one. Um, so that one survived that big down move. And let's see, how close am I to 60%? I'm about 60 cents from 60% on that one. My lunchtime, number one, I had booked 20 and 40, and that one too had the big slippage. Um, so my stop was like 650 or something like that, and it got stopped out at 960. So, I mean, that's, you know, with three contracts. So I ended up being a $290 winner when it should have been, you know, a 40% profit winner, then getting stopped. It's typically, you know, probably a thousand bucks or more that I lost on that one. So, yeah. Uh, but, but overall, I mean, all three of them are going to be green um, for the day. It, it's just really more unfortunate in my other accounts that that happened. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Yoga Delic. I had a three, two, my original three, two from this morning, hit 85% profit target and then it re-entered and that one got smoked. And then, so I'm in my third three, two right now and it's just barely up. And then I'm still in my original one-to-one. -one. I'm not, I, I'm not sure about a power hour trade here now. I mean, premiums are so small. <laughs> yeah. I'm not adding, adding any new power hours. Yeah, I mean, price action was it was just beautiful up until that that uh, what was that about a ten point drop in a few seconds. You know, I had mentioned this in my um, in the the Dr. Chad channel, like this is price action really ideal for TLC because oh yeah. You know, it's I mean, it's ideal for any zero DTE premium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when you got the push down, push up, enter, and you, it pushes down, get yourself off center. You add another one, pushes back up, you know, get your second one off center, but it books profits on your first one. I mean, that's exactly, exactly what, what you look for. But now that premiums are so sparse, it's just, I may have to just roll with what I've got. And in my second account, just take my $2,200 profit and be okay with that, which I probably should be okay with that. E. Allison, um, no, we're not, we're not close to 50%. We haven't made any adjustments to that ZB trade. We're up about 170 bucks on a potential thousand. So that's only about 17%. Took off seven of my 12 VXX verticals. They hit over 50%. Got an MES that's getting close. If I can get out of this MES one for 41 bucks, that would be 50%. It's currently at about 45, so it's not quite there. QQQ is up nicely as well after adjustments, but it's not quite to profit target either. I think a big part of me was, you know, knowing you've got FOMC coming later this week. There's going to be all kinds of volatility. I was really pumped to have a nice big green day today. And then <laughs> that happened, you know, because who knows what's going to happen the rest of the week, right? And SPX moved your cheese. What? Uh, let's see, I was trying to see what was the what was the FOMC day last month? It was. It was it. You know, if I remember right, that week I think I had a pretty good week though. Still, even though it was FOMC week. So March what? So today's April now, May 1st. Uh, so March 
20th. March 20th? Okay, yeah, I was green all five days, March that week. Uh, FOMC day, I took a one AM AM iron condor, book 2200 profit, and then set out the rest of the day. But on oh, Monday and Tuesday again. of that. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Monday and Tuesday of that week, I was green. The other thing I did do that could pay off is I did this little unbalanced iron condor that I turned into a couple free butterflies. So if we pin at 5,100, that'll be worth about 1,500. Or if we keep going and pin at 5,085, that could be up to 5,000. Oh, new lows of day. Yep. Oh boy. Getting dirty. Vic's trying to creep back up to 15. Yeah, makes me just want to close this last trade out and call it good. I'm not doing a two three today, DRB. Why would uh, why would you think I would not do a two three today? Pop quiz. Yeah, two days away from FOMC. I don't want to put my two day shorts on FOMC. Now tomorrow I'll still do a one, two and a one, three because the day before, a lot of times it does work well, putting your shorts on big event day. SPX just went red. Yeah. I went ahead and closed my final one out. I'm not going to go through $3 worth of slippage again. So Went ahead and just closed it. My one DTE was up about 40%. Now it's up about 23. So that's going to need a little bounce back. My remaining RIC contract is up 100%. Got in at 6.15. Stopped out of something. Breaking through the expected move to the downside. Stopped out of my other three two. Ouch. Stopped at a two full three twos today. Well, let's see what these puts are worth here. Oh, yeah, good point. Let's see if I have any puts left from my... Uh, they're worth 40 cents. So half of them. Yeah, as soon as I saw that coming down, I was like, I'm just going to close these last three contracts. That's all I got left. Not risk this. Stop. 
sold my longs for 30 cents. Well, that was, uh, that wasn't cool. One DTE still hanging on. NDX is still barely in range. Did Jerome leak his speech or what's going on here? <laughs> Who knows, man? Pausing right at the expected move, 50.93 ish. And my challenge portfolio went from up 4% to down 4%. New lows. My Rick is up 220%. Well, I guess I should feel really good about where are my plus 5,945 in my TLC trades. Guess I should feel good about that. I got in that rick at 615. It's currently trading at 20 bucks. I only got one lot left, but My one DTE is right at break even. So if we bounce, I'll still, still got a chance at booking that one. Was up I mean, 40%. With, spi with the spike in the VIX, is it going to give us a, a wire iron condor to enter? <laughs> yeah, you can get about. 15 wide right now, 10 or 15 wide. Russell still green, Dow still barely green, S&P and NASDAQ red. It was probably let's see times at two about noon today, maybe even earlier, where it, there was a thirteen point expected move. 
Still at 13. Yeah, I think I saw it get down to when it before the drop. I think I saw it get get down to about seven. So it went from seven back oh, really? up to thirteen. Wow. Uh, yeah, Dark Avenger, I did a 1 DTE, closed it out, 30% profit. Did the... Fifty one sixty fifty eighties. It's my one DTE today. Did you all with Schwab get back in to toss? Oh, yeah, Allison said back up. Okay. <clears throat> Only 10 more days and I get to be part of Schwab. I can't wait. Can't wait. I know. Hey, here's a question. Do you guys that are part of Schwab, did like your charts and everything all switch over or did you have to like redo all those? I would assume toss stays the same. Well, I created a, I created a Schwab password for one of my accounts and use whatever. And then when I logged in, it was like all my charts and everything was gone. Mm. So I just, you know, like my flexible grid and all that. Like, so I just was like, well, I'm, I just went, logged back in. Like I was TD Ameritrade that mm -hmm. day. I haven't walked back into Schwab since. Uh, okay. Maybe. So I guess maybe save your templates of your different watch lists and charting. And then as a file, I guess maybe, maybe, maybe you can re-upload them. See here, I'm done trading in that account. So let me close it out and log back, back in. Yeah, if you, I hope you don't have to redo redo every your charts and stuff. Schwab. I have to restart it.
One DTE back up about 17%. Point so I'll show you guys something I did earlier. <clears throat> this is something that this is one version of a, um, so I'm putting together kind of a series of trades that I'm calling the transformer spreads more than meets the eye. Um, so this is a, basically this is an unbalanced iron condor, just selling it twice as many put spreads and buying half as many uh, put spreads. So it's just unbalanced. So just got a little bit of risk to the upside. So I paid a 45 cent debit. I put this on near the open today with the idea of adjusting it into a risk-free trade. And so that's what I did. So uh, when the market started moving up this morning, uh, I looked at removing that, the little bit of upside risk, the 45 debit upside risk. And so I just sold three five wide put verticals. So it looked like this. And then when price started coming down, I wanted to protect the this downside risk. And so I ended up um, selling out 10, 10 vertical spreads here and then another buying two to come up with this. And so now I've got these two free butterflies essentially. So the worst I can do is a $15 profit if it goes out worthless to the upside or downside or right in the middle. But if I pin at 5,100, that's worth about almost 1,500. If we end up pinning at 5,085, that's worth about 4,800. So kind of a, kind of cool, some cool stuff that you can do by just knowing how to adjust these. So I'll, I'll be talking in more detail. This is the one example. I've got about six or seven different things like this that I'll be talking about at some point. Yeah, I just logged in, <clears throat> just logged into my Schwab. It's, um, blank um all my charts are gone like it's like it's brand new all my yo ntt charts all that i mean everything so you, you know how to grab them from your other version so you can re-upload them um not off the top of my head i'm sure i can figure it out but it's probably saving workspaces right well you're gonna go to the setup here in the upper if you're looking at my screen you're gonna go to the setup <laughs> yeah. or you're gonna go like say you want to import your watch list Go to your watch list. Yeah, um, the watch list isn't as as important to me as the actual charts. Right. It's but it's the same process. So if if you go to charts, for example, um, click on. Well. I, mean, I thought you were, I thought it was like a workspace if I remember right. Well, you, yeah, you can do the whole workspace for some reason. I've always had an issue with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the setup. So then you go save workspace as, and then you can right. share the workspace for whatever reason. I don't remember. I don't know if I gave it enough attention, but I've always had issues importing a full workspace. So doing it, different, you know, chart setups, uh, more one at a time, segmenting those and uploading those is typically has worked better for me. It's 
Still bouncing one DTE back up to 28%. So a lot of Marlo, a lot of times I can, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put that type of trade on at the end of the day for, at using one DT e options. And then first thing in the morning, you can do an adjustment to it and remove all the risk right away, uh, depending on what the market does. But um, so I didn't, I didn't put one on Friday. So that when I just put it on this morning and then we started pushing up, yeah, that's the sequence I did it, but yeah, you, Exactly. I would, I would, uh, I, I kind of thought we were going to grind higher all day, but then we rolled over. So, but usually have all kinds of opportunities to do what's necessary to clean up all the, the risk areas. One DT back up 33% might hit my profit target. Yeah, it's um just the, the whole concept of what I'll what I'll be showing. It's it's really like I'm gonna show some just kind of very step by step examples that you can do, but it but learning the concepts will also just kind of really I think it'll really help you understand what you can do in any situation to either reduce risk or lock in profits and reduce risk or just lock in profit. I mean, there's so many different things. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I'm in the process of trying to put down to, to be able to articulate it. Cause there's, there's so many different ways to do it. And I'm trying to create a little bit of a methodology, um, which kind of gives you a baseline of how to do it and then be able to, to use it in a lot of different ways. So like, here's an example, Morrow. So here's the original thing I had on. Had I just waited till now, so I can basically just do the opposite of this original one and, and change my strikes a little bit. I bought that for a 45 cent debit. This is currently trading at say a 70, 65 cent credit. So if I put that together, it's basically the same thing that I have on right now. You got two free butterflies. A lot of times you can put that on the night before and then the next morning you can flip it with something like this and lock in a profit and have a f couple free shots. I ended up legging into this scenario by doing this and then this and then this. Yeah, I actually I actually just opened up a new account in my wife's name 
that I'll be doing just this kind of thing in. That way I have to clean. I've got clean strikes and I can demonstrate it better. Open shared item. So I saved a workspace in my thinkorswim. Now I have Schwab open and now I'm trying to. Did you, and you got the little toss shared link? Same workspace as it's on two different computers. So you're going to have to like, I haven't gotten yourself that yeah. link or just type okay. it in. Okay. Share workspace. Mara, with, with IB, can't you set up a sub account? Is that how they do that? Okay, this, this is what it says. This might be of importance for people. When I when I went into share the workspace, there it is, flexible grid day trading. Then this pops up. A link for this item will be generated after sharing items recently shared on Thinkorswim at TD Ameritrade will be available the following day on Thinkorswim at Schwab. Oh, geez. Okay, so you got to so, share it, get that link, and wait a day before you can upload it? It sounds like it takes a day to get the link. It's the way I read that. Oh, you don't even get the link right away. Hey, I'll post. I'll post this in here, here so you can try to decipher what this is. That's what it said. A link for this item will be generated after sharing items recently shared on Thinkorswim at TD Train will be available the following day on Thinkorswim at Schwab. Previously shared items, however, should be immediately available. Hmm. I mean, what I did there was I went to try to get the link. Right. And, you know, I went share workspace and then I saw what I'd named it, clicked on it to get the link. And then I was going to email myself the link. Yeah. I get the same notification. <laughs> you know, I go to open shared item on Schwab. There's nothing there. So I'm assuming based on reading that tomorrow, it should be there. Yeah. Go back in tomorrow and see if there's a link. Oh, yeah, that makes sense tomorrow. NDX bouncing back up into range. And if my uh, three two wouldn't have hit that eighty five percent profit target, which is super early for those to hit, hit right before and then re-entered a new one, that was not great timing.
Bit K, are you feeling better? I don't know if you knew, but I, I won that bet on Friday while you're, while you're sleeping. I don't know if your chart said the same thing as mine, but it looked like I won. We've got a couple of earnings this week. Apple is on the second and Amazon is tomorrow after the bell. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Could be. I have I have short term memory issues. Somebody told me I won, so I just went with it. I'd like a 5,100 pin today. Oh, let's see. Let's give a little. Well, we've got we've got FOMC still to go before Apple's earnings. So I'll have to postpone my comments on that one. Amazon is tomorrow. Amazon looks higher. Probably go higher on Amazon, depending on what happens tomorrow. Fifty percent. Nice, madam. Mine's at 36. I sent you a DM earlier, madam, when you get a chance. Up to 5103. A little bit higher in my 1DT. I'll hit my 45%. That'll help. My challenge portfolio is going to be red for the day, but my other one's green. My trade here is green. Ooh, revenge power hour. Tell me more. <laughs> Got 25 minutes left, 24.
Welcome back, Mukesh. Now, there's not a course on 1DTE. I mean, it's pretty simple. Sell the $7 strikes. Buy it 60 wide. 45% profit target. If you check the uh, trade plan, all the details are on the... Uh, on the um, option Omega link. Don't think it really warrants a full course. Let's see, the 5105. At the Money Butterfly, trading for about a dollar 40 with 20 minutes to go. Might get a little magic today. I've got my stri I've got strikes available. I'm ready to go. Give my homes the ball. I'll be back in one minute. Absolutely dreading this move to Schwab, man. I just, ugh. Is anybody else dreading it as much as me? I guess it's pretty easy to set up my day trading charts, though. I guess I could just do that and worry about the rest that I have later. Those are the main things I use. Oh, coming from Tasty, yeah. I actually opened up in the Tasty account. I was going to do, do some other strategies in, um, test a few things, a little smaller account. And then when I started like trying to place trades in it, I was like, uh, no, thanks. <laughs> so just, I had deposited some money in there and then I just took it right back out. Yeah. I, it's the analysis part. It's, it's the analysis part that I don't like. I just, I don't know. It's like you get used to the analysis of a trade and being able to see it. I mean, even if, like, I could be sitting there in one screen looking at my analysis of in Thinkorswim in the exact same trade in Tastyworks, same strikes, same fills. But it's like I got to see the analysis in order to hit, hit set, you know, confirm and send. Yeah, Tasty. They they messed that up. I mean, it was this supposedly the same developers who built Toss, built Tasty, and it's like I thought it was going to be 
toss plus and it ended up being yeah. garbage. five butterfly trading for about a dollar fifty sixty maybe sixteen and a half minutes Got my 05 working. It's going to be a while before it fills, I would assume, but. Got my 05 fly working for two bucks. Looks like it's currently trading at about a dollar fifty. My one DTE is up to 42%, getting close to my 45. Nice little bounce back in that one after pillaging a couple of my other ones. Well, my little last runner in Rick was up 200%. Now it's back to even. <laughs> Four minutes until the MOC number. Wooga hit. All right. I didn't do one today. No, no Wooga for me. I had other things taking up my strikes. Might do a Wooga tomorrow. Fair warning, everyone. Chad's coming in hot on the Wooga tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep you posted. Tesla up 15%. Oh, yeah.
DJT coming back a little bit. Baidu at five and a half. Apple up two and a half, but it was up a lot more. O5 Butterfly now trading for about $1.70 with two minutes until the MOC. Better get my trade debate open. Get ready for MOC. Yeah, that's right. Settle right back down towards 05. Well, it's not going to fill before the MOC. Let's see what kind of MOC number we get coming in one minute. Ooh. Chiefs have signed Kelsey, extended him to get him the highest paid tight end in NFL. Oh, nice. Good for him. All right. Listening for MOC. Markets on close and balance one spot five billion to the buy side. One point five billion buy side. So no MOC trade. Still trying to get filled on my fly at one oh fives. It's trading for about a dollar seventy. Maybe a dollar eighty. See what the tens are selling for. So I've got a butterfly on the tens and the O fives. See if either one of those will fill. My one DTE still is not hit. It's at forty two percent. Eight minutes to go, no fill yet. Ten's getting close.
canceled my O fives. Dancing around two bucks. Use my size since I haven't gotten filled yet. Do smaller size. Still trying to get filled at two bucks. No fill on the tens. Come on. There we go. Build it two bucks on the short fifty one ten fly. Build on my one DTE forty five percent. So I'm going to go, I'm going to try to sell a call vertical at four bucks. If we can push up towards 15, should get filled. All the way back up to where it dropped. Yeah. What a move. I mean, I mean just makes no sense. Makes no sense. Job, Michael Todd. Did I say that? I said I wanted it. I wanted us to go down. Yeah, I needed a 5100 pin. That's where my transformer was set up. One of these days, DK, one of these days. All right, three minutes. Didn't quite get up to 15, so my vertical didn't get filled.
little pop up. That's the first time in a while I didn't do a power hour trade. Probably a good choice, it looks like. Yeah. First time since April 5th. Two minutes. Need another little push to get my vertical filled. Madam, did you get filled on that little push? I would assume not. But here it comes. Come on. Get on up. Another little oomph. One day to go in April. Straighten at three seventy five, four bucks. Filled. All right. Locked in on Mahomes with a minute and a little bit more to spare. So I did a, I reduced my size to a five lot because it got a little bit later, but so I locked in a five hundred dollar profit. And now if we tank, I could get more. But it looks like five hundred is what it's gonna be. With less than a minute. SPX all the way back up to fifty one fourteen. Twenty seconds. <laughs> S and P opened at fifty one sixteen. It's going to close at fifty one fourteen. A lot of dancing to end up where we started. I know. A lot of dancing. There she goes. Fifty one sixteen. <laughs> right where? Almost right where it's opened. All right, almost on the money. Real man. All right, all. So tomorrow's live stream. I think Chad's in the morning. The rest of the week is that right? Yeah. So Chad's uh, doing Mighty Ninety Runners in the morning, and then we'll be back for Power Hour Wednesday. On the calendar, it shows Power Hour, but we won't stream for Power Hour. We will stream for FOMC. All right, all. Have a fantastic night. See you later.